Hey everyone, Dr. Mungli here. So, in this video, I will be explaining you uh, dietary fibers. What is the importance of dietary fibers in our food? Like note that dietary fibers, so they are not only important for adding bulk or roughage to our uh, uh, like you no know, uh, stools and uh, in improving the intestinal movements and keeping the bowel movements uh, good and then keeping our bowel health good and all that. So, there is more than uh, what we have thought about uh, dietary fibers other than being just adding bulk to our stools. So, what actually is the dietary fiber and uh, how important it is? So, the dietary fiber it is the fiber content that is present in our food and mostly this fiber content it will come from the plant origin. The foods of plant origin is the one that gives us good amount of dietary fiber. That means, how much dietary fiber a person should need per day? In males, it is uh, estimated around 35 to 40 grams per day and whereas, in uh, females it is uh, 25 grams per day. So, th that means, this much amount of uh, fiber that should be coming in our diet, it should come from the plant source. So, the, if you look at like 30 grams or 35 grams in male like you no know, per day, so, it is not easy to you know get that much amount of uh, fiber uh, with the uh, kind of food that uh, nowadays most of the people are eating. So, because the more refined food or the junk food or something like that does not really add more uh, fiber to our diet. That means, uh, whenever there is a chance like you no, know, uh, we, we really need to make sure that uh, we include uh, more greens, more uh, uh, plant uh, food uh, so that we add roughage to or we add uh, more fiber to our diet. Like you now, uh, when you come, uh, when you talk about dietary fiber, so the dietary fibers can be of two type. One is uh, a soluble dietary fiber, other is uh, insoluble dietary fiber. So the and uh, there is one more that is uh, indigestible starch or something. So the soluble dietary fiber, as the name says, it is uh, soluble in water, and that means it becomes a gel-like uh, uh, thing when it is uh, mixing with the water inside our uh, stomach and then moving on to the small intestine. And also note that no fiber is digested in the small intestine. To certain extent, the soluble fiber can be fermented in the large intestine, but no uh, fiber is digested in the small intestine or in the stomach. So what actually the soluble fiber does? Like we which foods will have more soluble fibers? So, the soluble fiber is uh, present uh, in fruits, it is present in uh, uh, nuts, it is present in uh, certain uh, vegetables and also certain cereals. So, these are the, the uh, soluble fiber and also most importantly the oatmeal. Like you know the oat, oatmeal like when you know people take oat as a breakfast. So, mostly this does not have that much calorie, but it has a lot of fiber and that fiber is there in the soluble form. It is a soluble fiber. So, that means it uh, becomes a gel like thing and uh, it fills up the stomach. Basically, it delays the gastric emptying. When the gastric emptying, so soluble fiber what it does, what, what soluble fiber does is when it gets into the stomach, mixes with the water and makes a gel like thing and uh, it slows this uh, like you no know, digestion process, it slows the absorption process. That means, it kind of gives uh, fullness in the stomach, so that uh, the, the, uh, the appetite uh, center or the satiety center that is there in the hypothalamus, it is controlled. That means, we a uh, person do not tend to eat more food because it is full, they feel full because that becomes a gel like and adds bulk, right. So, when the stomach contracts, the things will get into the small intestine, in the small intestine again that bulk is there and it slows uh, slow down the like you no know, uh, absorption of glucose, it slow down the absorption of cholesterol specially. So, the glucose absorption, glucose surge after the meals, it will be reduced, it will be decreased. So, why? Because the soluble fiber is kind of, it is slowing down the absorption of glucose. So, the glucose surge, what we call it as like you no know, rise in the blood glucose after meals, we call it as postprandial blood glucose or the 2 hour blood glucose. It is kind of slowed, I mean, basically it is not, there is no surge, there is no rapid rise and fall of the glucose after the meals, which generally happens. Uh, when the refined food is taken or the high sugary food is taken where there is no fi much fiber that actually uh, rises sharp rise and uh, like fall of the blood glucose will happen increasing more glucose and that is basically taking all this extra glucose into fatty acid synthesis. Whereas, here 
we are having this fiber, high fiber content. So, it slows the glucose absorption. So, there is no much glucose surge in the blood. It controls the postprandial blood glucose level. When the postprandial blood glucose level is controlled, it basically helps diabetes patients. Also, it helps a normal person. Why? Because the when you control the glucose, when you are not allowing the surge in the glucose, so insulin is not released much. So, in, when the insulin is less and when glucose is kind of like you know, slowly rising, so most of it is kind of metabolized, undergoes uh, oxidation for the energy purpose rather than sharp rise in the glucose going into the liver and in the liver you may, uh, like liver makes glucose, extra glucose as fatty acids and uh, converted to triacylglycerol and ultimately stored in the adipose tissue. So, the point here is having more fiber in the diet, it controls the blood sugar level and that means it is going to control a overweight person putting on more weight. So, overweight obesity and followed by diabetes can be controlled by increasing dietary fiber in our diet and what else it does. So, the soluble fiber it decreases the cholesterol levels. Why? Because already cholesterol 50 percent of the cholesterol is the one that is absorbed in our body and a normal conditions. Now, what happens if you are more adding more fiber to your diet? So, it slows down that 50 percent. So, that means most of the cholesterol is going out of the uh, intestine into the feces. That means it slows the cholesterol, it decreases the cholesterol levels in the body. So, the, when the cholesterol levels decrease, that means LDL cholesterol decrease and uh, atherosclerosis can be prevented and that means there you know hypertension, atherosclerosis, hypertension, this kind of things can be prevented on long term. So, it means your dietary fiber it decreases the, it decreases the um, like yeah, actually uh, de decrease gastric sorry increases gastric emptying time thereby you do not like you feel full and uh, thereby a person do not eat much that means uh, and also glucose surge is prevented post blood post prandial blood glucose is controlled uh, that means a uh, person do not put on weight on long term basis no obesity uh, like obesity is controlled when the overweight obesity is controlled diabetes is prevented. So, when the diabetes is prevented all the consequences of diabetes can be prevented and also uh, lowering the cholesterol level lowering the glucose uh, controlling the glucose level we control our lipid levels thereby we control atherosclerosis and hypertension later and con complications of atherosclerosis and hypertension that is a myocardial infarction stroke this kind of things can be prevented on the long term. So, that means uh, using dietary fibers is really really good thing. What else? Uh, sol so, what happens to the soluble fiber once it goes to the small intestine? It is not digested, it is slowing down all this process and once it goes to the large intestine what happened to the soluble fiber? So, the soluble fiber partially it is uh, undergoing fermentation by the colonic bacteria. We are lot like you no know, in our body uh, it, according to some estimates we have 100 trillion bacteria uh, entire body. So, half of them are there in the gastrointestinal tract. So, there are trillions of bacteria present in the uh, uh, gastrointestinal tract and the colonic bacteria what they do. So, they are going to ferment soluble fibers into small chain fatty acids. So, this is something which is very interesting that I have read recently in uh, some of the research articles. So, the soluble fibers or the fibers so partly when they undergo a fermentation process. So, there will be short chain fatty acids that are made which are like you no know, acetic acid, uh, propionic acid, butyric acid. See acetic acid is a 2 carbon fatty acid, propionic acid is 3 carbon fatty acid, butyric acid is 4 carbon fatty acid. These short chain fatty acids. So, once they are absorbed, so they are going to control our metabolism, they are going to you now uh, alter the insulin sensitivity. There are a lot of uh, medical uses of short chain fatty acids which are uh, like kind of right and uh, now it is uh, uh, researchers are exploring all these like you now what all the uh, uh, functions of short chain fatty acids in our body which are coming from our dietary fiber. So, that means short chain fatty acids. So, they are going to control our metabolic uh, metabolism in a positive way and prevent so many non-communicable diseases including autism, Alzheimer's disease and uh, uh, development of diabetes mellitus and so many uh, no diseases uh, over a period of time in a long term. So, they can be prevented. So, this is about soluble fibers. What about insoluble fibers? Insoluble fibers are again present in uh, leafy vegetables, um, then the green, uh, vegetables and also uh, present in uh, whole grains, uh, present in seeds. 
So, all these uh, insoluble fibers as the name says they are not soluble in uh, water. So, that means they add bulk they add roughage to our stool. So, that means they make like proper intestinal movement. So, intestinal movement is proper and the regular bowel movement when it is there. So, uh, it prevents constipation. So, the insoluble fibers of course, even the soluble fibers also. So, they prevent constipation. So, when the constipation is prevented, so that means there will be prevention of. So, the hemorrhoids and fissures, anal fissures and hemorrhoids can be uh, prevented. So, these are, these are the you know uses of uh, insoluble fibers there. So, and what else uh, is uh, 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 add bulk to our stool? Something called as indigestible starch. This indigestible starch, it comes from legumes, it comes from beans, it comes from plants. So, these are the starch that is not digested in our intestine, small intestine because we, we simply we do not have enzymes to do that. So, they just move into the colon and uh, undergoes fermentation partly and then add bulk to the uh, bulk to the stool and then it actually helps in the movement bo uh, normal bowel movement. So, this is all about uh, dietary fiber. So, uh, the point here is we really need to make sure that we add good plant based uh, things in, in our food, make sure we have a lot of veggies, make sure we eat more fruits uh, and also add uh, wherever the fiber comes from. So, whether it is a whole grain, uh, nuts and seeds, uh, uh, fruits leafy vegetables, vegetables. So, make sure we add lot of them in our food. So, over a long term we are going to get uh, a good uh, benefits of dietary fibers. Of course, there are a lot of supplements are also available uh, dietary fiber supplements. We can uh, use it, uh, but the thing is always it is good to take natural uh, things. So, that means we can uh, actually get so many other benefits of that not just the fiber. So, uh, green leafy vegetables or leafy vegetables or fruits, nuts and seeds they come with lot of other nutrients like vitamins, minerals and uh, good fat like omega 3 fatty acid, omega 6 fatty acid this kind of things will come in uh, uh, along with the fiber. So, it is always good to uh, include lot of edges in our diet. So, this is all about uh, dietary fiber I hope this video has helped you in understanding this important uh, topic in nutrition so about the dietary fiber. So, I will see you in my next video till then you take care.